Oh, hello. This is a beautiful interview setup, isn't it? We're in a high-rise building overlooking a large city. Setups like this are only for the elite, the best of the best. Just kidding. <laughs> we are actually in a regular house in a neighborhood. In this video, we're gonna show you how you can do this yourself if you have a few thousand bucks laying around. Yesterday, we were in this room and we filmed a corporate interview for a random company. It was a legit gig. We got paid, sent them the footage, and they went on their way. The people that are gonna see that footage in that video will have no idea that we were in this room. Tons of YouTubers now have been talking about this three TV setup that looks like a window in a high rise building. And we started watching these videos and thought, this is really cool for YouTubers and stuff, but I think this also works for video companies like us who film interviews. In this video, we're gonna show you how a video wall like this is very versatile and useful. So yes, this is great for YouTubers and stuff, but really, this is great for anyone who shoots video, as long as you can afford three TVs. And I will say these are Roku TVs from Walmart. They were about 600 bucks a piece. If you're gonna build a real video wall, it could cost upwards of 50 to $100,000. I think of this like a little low budget video wall so we can kind of jump onto the bandwagon of virtual production and stuff. First, we thought, okay, should we mount these on the wall? But then we realized that mounting three TVs on the wall vertically would actually be incredibly difficult and we wouldn't be able to get behind them to make changes and stuff. So we ended up buying three TV stands and mounting the TVs vertically on those stands. And we're gonna share the links to all of these things in the description of the video. Right here, we have the UHD TV wall controller 4K 60 gigahertz ultra HD box. What this box is doing is making it so the image that's on our computer, oh, look. What kind of computer is this? I think it's one of those, uh, the Pear Studios. Uh... Orange or some sort of fruit company made that. Anyway, this box here is uh, a way for the computer to just send one signal to the box, which then distributes the signal to all three TVs, making our lives much easier. See this? To cover the seam between the TVs, we bought this white composite lightweight trim from Home Depot, and we just put some Velcro on the back. So that way, these can be removable in case we need to get to the TVs. And it covers up the lining between each TV very well. I think these look good against most sky backgrounds because they're light colored, so they don't really draw the eye too much, but they are there like they're breaking up the window in the high rise. On the end here, the TV kind of butted up against the wall and it didn't look quite right. So we bought this from Target. We bought some drapes and shears and just taped them up, creased them so they would look nice. And it's covering this problem area, making it look realistic. The next important decision was covering up the base of the TVs so we could have more shot options. So that's why we made this. This is a wooden base that we made to cover the base of the TVs because the stands were showing there were a bunch of cables and it didn't look quite right. So we just went to Home Depot and bought some two by fours and some plywood and some screws and glue and we actually had to buy a saw too. And Andrew and I spent an afternoon making this in the backyard. We decided to have it come out like this to make it look like a windowsill and we wanted to be able to put plants and stuff on it to make it look a little bit more convincing, to add that little, little extra life. We also got this white trim at the bottom so it would look realistic in case our camera sees down there and it's already come in handy with some of our camera angles. After getting the TVs in the right spot and making sure the trim and the windowsill look convincing, the next step was to make sure the lighting looked convincing. And this actually took a lot of work, but I'm gonna explain to you what we learned and why it helped us. realized that a window, I mean, this took some thinking through, but we realized that a window does emit light. And so with some of our original tests, we noticed that the plants on the windowsill and the windowsill itself was dark in shadow as if there was no light coming through the window. So this aperture tube that we've mounted up here acts as our light coming out of the window. And check this out, this is what it does. That's without the light, that's with the light. 
This helps the whole thing become more convincing. However, the light was spilling onto our subjects too much, so we added this black flag, which basically makes this light mostly affect this, and it doesn't spill around too much. Again, for the idea of light coming through the window, we decided to use an aperture spotlight with an aperture 600X, and it's way over there, and it's shining over here, so that way it looks like window light is spilling onto the back wall. It's a subtle thing, but I think it helps. Up here, we've mounted the Amaran F22C with a grid on it so it doesn't spill onto the back wall. This is our standard backlight for any subject that's gonna be in this place. And we positioned it in this spot so that way it looks like the window light is coming and hitting our subject from behind, thus increasing the realism of the space, but also adding dimension to our subject. And really, this lighting here becomes standard three-point lighting. Over here, we have our key light. This is the biggest softbox that we own. It's called the Light Dome 150 from Aperture. It gives a really soft look and it's really large. And for this space, for simplicity of setting it up, we decided to go with this. You know, it's really wasteful of us to do this because this is a 600X, a very bright light, and we really don't need that much light in this space. This is at 2.6% power. <laughs> it's a little nothing. You could pull this look off with a big soft box with a much cheaper, smaller light, but we just had this at hand and thought we would use it. Next, to complement this key light and to create shape and dimensionality on the face, we decided to go with this negative fill. And I really like big four by eight negative fills like this because it actually can come up and block some of the light that's spilling down from the ceiling and all the way down. Negative fill is your friend. And when you're trying to create that shape and dimensionality in the image, it really can help. And I've noticed that in rooms, light can spill around and different colored walls can actually affect the skin. So what I've learned is that negative fills and even white bounces can purify the color and kind of keep the skin in a natural color range. Let's talk about camera settings. We filmed with the Canon C500 Mark II. It's a full frame camera and we used a Sigma 85 f1.4 lens. We filmed with the lens wide open to maximize our amount of bokeh. This makes the background look real and hides our imperfections. I exposed for this scene just like I was filming with real windows. I made sure the highlights in the skies were just below clipping, and then I lit the subject. With the lens wide open and the ISO at 320, I put on two stops of ND and the sky on the TV looked great. Exposing for the TVs first and making sure they look bright is important because if the TVs look too dark, it won't look like you're filming a real window. For reference, check out this real interview we filmed with real windows. Notice how bright the windows are. Next, we're gonna make this space look different by just changing what's on the TVs and putting up a different kind of wall here because we've got a bunch of different kind of backdrops to choose from. Come here. Okay, Alex, here we have a box of backdrops that we can use. This one's not gonna work because it has windows on it. We got this one. Okay. This one. And that's it. So, of these two. So many options. Of these two, which one do you prefer? Uh, the red. This is gonna look convincing, I promise. To get the image onto the TVs and to be able to position it where we want, we're just using DaVinci Resolve. That way we can frame the image and kind of move it where we want to very quickly. There's color control, crop control, zoom and focus and tilt control, all the controls we want. New look, new lens, new background. So check this out. We're filming on the Sigma 40 millimeter lens, which gives us a totally different look than before. As you saw, we put up this cool brick backdrop onto the wall, which changed that back wall. And what we're going for here is this idea of, uh, you know, kind of being in that fishbowl conference room in a corporate space with a lot of glass windows where you can see out to the next area. If you think about this background too much, you might start having problems with it. But I think at first glance for an interview setup for some kind of corporate interview or something, this looks pretty good to me. Next, we wanted to film a nighttime shot with the city outside the window. So 
So we didn't have to change up the lighting too much, but we did change it up. So our key light was over here. We moved it back here, moved it up. In here, we put this lamp here so we could have an excuse for this light. And in here, we have one of the aperture bulbs and we uh, made the white balance like 3200 or something like that. Um, we made this light blue. We took our aperture tube light and made that blue because the light from the city was kind of that tone and we wanted it to seem like the blue light was spilling into this environment. To have some lighting from underneath, we used this four by foam board. I use this thing all the time. It's pretty much my go-to thing. And then of course, this negative fill here stops this brick color from spilling in on the, this side of his face and making it too warm and it uh, kind of controls those contrast ratios to make it seem darker on this side. Let us know what you think in the comments. What do you think of all of these different setups? Which one was your favorite and which ones do you think look kind of cheesy? If you enjoyed this video and you want to subscribe to our channel, please don't. We don't need any more subscribers and, and here's why. Psychologically, if, if we were having too many people subscribe to our channel, it could go to our head. And, and it would make us feel like we're, we're so cool and like we're a big YouTube channel or something. And then everything would fall apart. We want to keep this small and homegrown.